Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to BC 314, our course on media and technology. Uh, let's take a moment to pray, please, and we will get started. Could somebody lead us in prayer? Thank you. Father, we thank you for this morning. We humble ourselves before you. We pray that this time of learning would be beneficial for us. We pray that you, you would instruct us and you would also help us to understand things that is required for us in the days to come and help us to use all this in our, our ministry life, in our personal life, and help us to be good witnesses of your word and good stewards of what you have entrusted us, God. We thank you for this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, so we are down to our last two lessons, like we mentioned um, last week. We're going to talk a little bit on uh, artificial intelligence and how it affects the church and the ministry. And then we're going to talk a little bit about um, data protection and uh, privacy. Uh, I've shared notes on both of these. And uh, so we'll, we'll use the PDFs that I've shared. Uh, it's not necessarily everything we need to know on these topics, but uh, something to think about, keep in mind as we um, have, uh, as, as, as our churches, our ministries use media and technology to uh, minister and serve people. So let me just share the... So, uh, lesson number 16, uh, Artificial Intelligence, Church and Christian Ministry. So this is actually a presentation. I, I actually just did it yesterday with our church staff and uh, a few other people uh, in church, in the church office. Just did it yesterday, uh, kind of just to give our staff also things to think about. So it's very, very fresh uh, and uh, uh, and and so we kind of go through this uh, uh, this uh, content uh, just to get us to think about a few things uh, on artificial intelligence. Now, um, uh, uh, artificial intelligence itself is not a new thing uh, because uh, researchers and uh, especially in the area of computer science and uh, people have been working on it for many decades now and. Um, but what really happened was when uh, OpenAI uh, released, I mean, they had released a product earlier, which was more in a research stage. But in no November of 2023, when they released ChatGPT uh, in its uh, in its you know in its uh, usable form uh, in a, in a way that the public could use it, then suddenly. AI became like a big thing, you know, everybody was using it and uh, it just it, it exploded from there. Uh, but actually, you know, literally all of this, uh, a lot of this work was being done over the last um, three or four, maybe four decades. Uh, really, work was going on in this, in this space and people were thinking about these things and slowly things were evolving. And um, um, in 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 at at APC, you know, we are using these AI tools, um, uh, you know, for graphic design, for other content that we may need to write. Our IT team uses it for developing. Uh, people use it to check their emails. I mean, to correct their emails, and we also use it to generate our audio books. Basically, we give text and we get the speech. So we are using it in you know so many different ways. And uh, many of us are already familiar with uh, some of the main platforms, uh, ChatGPT, Gemini, which is from Google, and Copilot from Microsoft. And of course, there are many other platforms that, or tools that we can use. So um, AI, of course, impacts the workplace. Um, it has impacted it. It continues to impact the workplace. and. Uh, uh, the main thing uh, I, I want us to see, and I, I'm not like necessarily trying to promote one or one or the other, but just trying to share some thoughts here. That um, uh, in the workplace, AI can 
help us be more efficient and more productive. The tools, the AI tools that are available can help us. You know, so uh, we should not look at. I mean, I, 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 let me put it like this: we should look at AI as uh, as some additional tools that we have uh, to help us make become more efficient and productive in the work we do. It can help us even in making decisions. You know, if you want to get some information to help you make a decision, you can, you know, ask uh, any of these. You know, go go to any of these AI platforms and uh, chat GPT or Gemini or and ask your question. You get the information you need, which could help, hopefully help you make an informed decision. Uh, we can use it also to support our people, and we'll talk some about some of that. It can help us save money. Uh, it can also help us. Uh, you know, come up with some new ways of serving people and also grow and expand. So, so I want us to look at AI from a positive uh, side. I mean, yes, people can use it for negative things, uh, for destructive things, but there are also positive things which we should focus on and see how we can leverage that for the church, for the Christian ministry. And we will, uh, we'll, we'll get to that uh, shortly. So as far as our work is concerned, you know, we're doing work. Uh, AI can, 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 the tools, the AI tools can really help us. Uh, so of course, uh, part of uh, adapting to an, an AI-enabled workplace is uh, learning to redefine our own roles, uh, which is, okay, uh, let me use this tool. Let, let me let this tool do what it's good at and let me do what, is, what I'm good at, you know, so I can use the tool I can, the tool can give me the information, it can give me whatever, you know, it, it can do. Then I take it and then I apply my mind, I apply my skills to, to do better, to be better at what I'm doing. So, uh, you know, the, the main, uh, so, so when we're using, engaging with these AI tools, uh, of course, we need some new skill sets and probably one of the most important skills is, is how to engage with the tool properly. So you, you know, generally they call it prompt engineering. Basically it's like, how do you ask the right kind of questions so that you get the information that you need uh, from the AI tool? Uh, so primarily we're talking about, you know, these generative AI tools that can generate information for you uh, and so on. And uh, of course, uh, when we put these tools into use in the workplace, there could be some tasks uh, that are that become redundant, that become unnecessary, which we could now in have these AI tools to do for us. Uh, and we'll talk about that. Um, thirdly, this, this, there can be a good collaboration where uh, you know we can use AI to give us ideas or help us look at you know things that we other, see things that uh, we may not uh, otherwise see uh, and it can help us serve people better give us an advantage in becoming more efficient uh, people's experiences can get better and so on so um, you know and, and, and uh, we, there, there are lots of ways we can think about so, so for example, uh, so what we call as a conversational AI, which is generally otherwise known as a chat bot or a conversational. I suppose we deploy a conversational AI on our website and also in our church app, where people can come and ask questions, generally general questions like, you know, uh, suppose it's a visitor, they come to our church website and, you know, maybe on a Saturday evening, nobody's in the church office. And they want to know what time or which location is the church meeting at. Right. So uh, if they call the church office, there's nobody there to answer the phone. But when we have a conversational AI, uh, a chatbot available, they can just type in a question. Hey, what is the nearest location to me, you know, for service? And what time is it? And what location is it? And immediately they get an answer back saying, you know, this is the place where we're meeting. This is the time. So it's just giving them the information they need, they can come to church. But now, nobody, uh, if they try to call the church office and nobody's there to answer the phone, they might miss out on that, or they may not know where to go and find that information on the website itself, even though it may be there. So just a simple example, or 
you know uh, we could we could think of a little bit more uh, when we create uh, using AI uh, 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 what we call it's a search generative experience which is uh, they are asking questions or searching for information but we give them uh, a, a, a nice nicely formatted user-friendly response so example today if you go to apcw.org website you have a search button you search you know suppose we search for uh, uh, healing and deliverance example and I'm just giving it some healing and deliverance what the result looks like is it'll all be links of you know here are the sermons here are daily devotions or whatever whatever it can find on the subject of healing and deliverance and there might be three or four pages of links that's what we will get today uh, it is good but a search generative experience the response would be very different suppose they go I suppose we had a search generative experience uh, an AI uh, tool on our website and somebody goes and types healing and deliverance then the response would be one or two or even three paragraphs on what the Bible says on healing and deliverance right and then it might say here's it'll give you it'll give very meaningful links here's a book that you can read on healing and I'll give us healing and deliverance here's a sermon series you can listen to on healing I'll give the sermon series a so that kind of a response is much better than what they get today, which is, you know, about 30 links to do so many different things. But that's what an AI-powered search generative response gives to the user, right? Uh, a much better experience for people. Uh, so like this, there are so many things that we can do uh, using AI, or let's say, you know, we are writing lessons, uh, and I'm just giving some examples. Suppose you're writing lessons for children's church, and then uh, you can use one of the, uh, you know, uh, openly available AI tools like ChatGPT or uh, Gemini, and you go there and say, now use the New King James Version of the Bible as your reference, and using this Bible, uh, give me three illustrations. I I'm teaching a lesson on being courageous. Um, uh, for ages, you know, uh, six to eight, uh, give me three examples, one from the Old Testament, one from the New Testament, uh, or give me real life examples, the Bible examples we may already know. So give me three examples, applying scripture to situations where children in this age group can demonstrate courage, right? So it will generate three real life scenarios or maybe more and then you can take it and you don't have to use it exactly but it gives you some ideas okay and then based on that you can come up with some you know improved ideas so it acts like an aid to you know i'm just using this scenario of children kids lessons or kids stories or examples for kids so it gives you uh, helps you with some ideas uh, we don't have to copy paste those things but we could use those ideas similarly if somebody's working on a script for a short film you can give the prompt you can say you know i'm writing a short five minute short script for a film addressing this scenario addressing um you know uh, let's say uh, gender disparity in the workplace i want to address it from a biblical perspective I use the bible as your main source uh, create a scenario and a script for this. It'll come up with something. Uh, you don't have to use the whole script, but it gives you some ideas, some things to think about. Oh, okay, that's a nice idea. Maybe you want to use it. Maybe you don't want to. But you know, you can rephrase it. Try look at another idea. So uh, you can use AI as a tool uh, to give you some thoughts and ideas and so on and so forth. Similarly, when you're writing music or poetry, you can use it to uh, help, you know, as a tool. But of course, this leads us to two big questions, spiritual, from a spiritual side, right? Um, the first question, which I will open up for discussion, is, uh, and I, I just like to hear what people say, people think about this. 
can God anoint and use work produced by AI? So example, sermons or uh, sometimes even Christians or AI can generate songs, poetry, music, I mean, whatever. The question is, can God use this kind of uh, something that's generated by AI, right? Can God use it? I just want to hear your thoughts on this. What are your thoughts? Now, I've given some clues there, but can God use content? Whether it's a sermon content, whether it's a uh, something for music or poetry or a story or illustration, whatever. So we're using AI as a tool. It's giving you some information. Question is, and you're telling it to use the Bible as a reference. You can even specify the Bible. You can say, use New King James or use NIV. Or, so it'll use scripture and it'll generate some content for you, for us. The question is, can God use it? Just your thoughts, okay? I'm not. I'm not saying uh, we have a chapter and verse to answer this question. Uh, I'm just saying, uh, let us share our thoughts. Please go ahead, Collins. Yes, thank you, Pastor. I'm yet to read somewhere in the Bible where God created a paper and a pen and chalkboards and other things. So before I portray my illiteracy in not knowing the Bible, I would say yes until i see those lines where god created the 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 pen the the chalk i'm not trying to say that god did not create them in, indirectly but i think we must use uh whatever means so long as we mitigate uh the cause the the cons of such a things because i also believe that even in the shrine where people go uh, i remember Saul went and inquired from the spirit of Samuel in the Bible. But I think even right there, God was there. Regardless of how we use the methodologies, regardless of what, God is, is Alpha and Omega is in everything. If we rightly use it and we follow what the Bible says, because we are not against the Bible, I think we can use those, those ones which are around now and those ones which are going to come in the future. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Colin. So Colin, in a sense, is saying, yeah, it's yes. Uh, you know, for, and, and he's using the example where th there is no place in the Bible talking about pen and paper, chalk and board. But, you know, we've been using those tools for a long time. So Colin's uh, statement is, yeah, God can. Anyone else, please? I will just share my thoughts. Uh, I just opened chat if we can almost wrote a song now. And I'll just paste it up. And it's pretty good if you can see in the chat. Uh, it gives the chorus, it gives verse one, it gives verse two. And uh, I also remember when the AA was uh, coming up, uh, like just started out in Instagram, the Christians, they were all poor. Uh, there is some other AA which also gives a tune for it. Uh, and even I heard that in Instagram, uh, it was nice. It was good. It literally someone was singing it. You don't even need recording any voice. It was like that. But what I personally believe is, um, when we release a, a worship song or a song to bless the community uh, around us, I think uh, the intention behind it, our personal relationship with God, all those matters. Not because you you write a song. I don't think it's because there are various songs out there, but uh, there are few songs that are close to our heart that that brings the presence of God into our lives. Um, so I personally believe uh, you can use it. You can take some help from AI if you are not sure about the language or uh, to form sentences or chorus. You, you can use it, but um, as a if you want to be a bless, if you want your song to be a blessing to people, I think uh, uh, you should really spend your time with God and uh, 
and all the other factors like our personal we see what we do in this sacred room is what comes out to the people uh, so i think you can use it as a help but you can't completely depend on it and just this, this means every 15 minutes not even it just takes one minute to write a song so you can release almost 100 200 songs a day if you are just going to do it just like this uh, but yeah your heart posture your personal engagement with god matters a lot but you can take help from me yeah, that's what i believe if you want any help uh, for words or for some photos maybe maybe god can help you out through it but you can't just completely rely on it and make it yeah. mm. thank you Thanks for sharing. A very nice song. Huh? I really like the words here. <laughs> it's pretty good, actually. I feel like sending it to our worship team and saying, hey, <laughs> let's sing this. Very nice. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Anyone else? Is that custom? Um... Right, this uh, this verse crossed my mind, and I would like to share that. It is from Philippians 1, 15, 16, 17, 18. Down. So it says, uh, some indeed preach Christ even from envy and strife, and some also from goodwill. The former preach Christ from selfish ambition, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my chains, but the latter out of love, knowing that I'm appointed for the defense of the gospel. What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached. And in this I rejoice. Yes, and will rejoice. So here we see Paul is rejoicing in whichever way the word is preached. And the word, the word of God has power to change. It has power to transform, to nurture, to co for correction. So even if we use AI uh, like uh, to help to touch lives or to, you know, um, because it is word-based, Bible-based. So uh, I believe that, um, yes, God will work. And um, we, are, we were talking about the anointing thing, like whether God will anoint this. I believe, yes, God will, because it is word-based. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Thank you all for sharing your thoughts. And uh, yeah, I also agree, you know, um, and like, uh, we, we, we recognize, we recognize, and we all understand that God anoints his word and he anoints people, like, you know, the people who are delivering the message. And uh, in order to get that message, yeah, we can use so many tools, like we use our computers, we use a printed Bible, we use Bible on the phone, uh, we use commentaries, we use a lot of study tools, all those things. So all those things are there. They help us study the word. Then we go and deliver the word. Who? The messenger. You know, God's servant, you and I. We may sing it, we may preach it, we may write it. How we use so many different formats of delivery. That's okay. God anoints his word and God anoints his people. Now in our preparation and our learning we use lots of tools lots of tools and ai is one of those tools it'll help us it'll like you know put a song together it'll give us some information all those things but ultimately it's the word of god and it's the person whom god whom god is using and so i think when we look at it from that perspective we can very confidently say yes god can anoint and god something you know it may be am may have generated something or helped in the learning process or the studying process or whatever but ultimately it's the person who's carrying the message who's carrying the word who was anointed by god and so that's where the anointing flows and uh, so we understand that so we shouldn't be afraid we shouldn't hesitate to use the tools and uh, and recognize that you know it god anoints us he anoints his word 
But this also leads us to another question, which actually was asked yesterday in our staff meeting, and then I added it to the notes. Um, the second question is, uh, what is it? Yeah. Uh, if we use or depend on AI, uh, then what role does listening to the Holy Spirit or being led by the Spirit have in sermon preparation or songwriting or etc. You know, how do we balance this? Okay, I have AI as a tool. I can ask a question, it will give me some information. Uh, I can tell it to write a sermon, it will some, put some outline together or it will tell me the right scriptures to use or uh, it can write a poetry or song or things. Okay, all those things. It's, it can do those kinds of things. But the question is then, what about me listening to the Holy Spirit? You know, am I not supposed to, are we not supposed to be listening to the Holy Spirit and depending on the Holy Spirit, right? So that's the, that's the question. What do, what are your thoughts on that? Like, you know, when somebody asks us this question, you know, hey, you're supposed to be listening to the Holy Spirit. Why are you using uh, AI? You're supposed to be inspired. You're supposed to be, you know, you're supposed to get it from God uh, by using this tool, AI tool. How would we respond to that? Okay, I see Rosalind's comment in the chat. It is, um, it should not make us uh, lazy Christians. We cannot be totally dependent on AI. Yeah, true. So, yeah, how do we balance that, right? So let's hear your thoughts. Okay, go ahead, Jafina. Yeah. Uh, end of the day, we are humans. <laughs> I hope we don't forget that. Uh, and uh, leading the, uh, in that case, you can't even search a verse in Google because uh, again, Google is also a tool that we use, and we've been using uh, for so long to build our sermons. Uh, there's no difference. It's, it's just the network, and AI just gives much more detail than Google. Maybe Google doesn't give the exact lines. And the AI gives more exact lines. But end of the day, uh, you know your congregation, you know your community, you know your people. AI can never know that. AI can never uh, know the struggles of the place, the people, uh, doesn't have emotions. And so being led by the Holy Spirit is very important to, to connect with the people because uh, even we all hear so many songs, but we know which touches, which is led by the Holy Spirit, which through which God speaks to us. And there are certain messages we feel like, no, it's not from the word of God. So uh, being led, I think AI should be viewed as a tool, uh, as we keep saying that it's, it's, it's a tool, you can use it up. Uh, but again, we are, we are humans, we we need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit to minister to the people, not the AI to minister to people. And uh, we know that even sermon is not something that we memorize and we don't speak. Uh, it's not a, a speech. It's not a. It's not something like that. It's it's a very deep connection with the Word of God, which helps us to connect with the people. It helps us to pierce their heart and helps us to imprint the truth in their heart. So it's not just about preparing. Uh, so, but yeah, being, we are led by the Holy Spirit. Obviously, that's why we want to teach. That's why we want to share the word of God. And AI is, is, is just a tool. So it has nothing to stop us from being led by the Holy Spirit. Because I feel in that case, Google also stops. Uh, then we all have to just keep flipping our Bible. Uh, so yeah, that's my, my thoughts. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Collins, please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. You see, we've been here for almost 30, 30 months uh, learning from APC, a holistic curriculum view. Uh, what I think, words in there as words, whether you get them from the Bible, whether you get them from anywhere, they are words, they stay as words. But once we are led by the Holy Spirit, we, we can use it and God works through us to impact our lives and those around us. Because if words being spoken would change anything, then I don't think that the demons would have slapped the seven, uh, the seven sons of, of, 
of that little man they call the real, the real words which were being used by Paul. <laughs> but when they said that uh, in the names of Jesus Christ, who Paul preaches, we say that get out. I, I, I think they got the beating of the times. Mm -hmm. You can imagine how it was even written in the Bible. So I really think words will always be words, but they are impacted when you and I are rooted in the word of God. Then this is where we can get the impact. So we should always know that once we use words from let us be AI, let us use it from Grammarly, whatever the case, or even the Bible, if we are not rooted, they will just be words. We always need to, 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 to keep that one in mind. I would like mm. to pause from here. Thank you. Right, right. So we have to speak. Ultimately, it's the word that, that will really make God's word that really make an impact. Yeah. Anyone else? Yeah. Okay. Thank you all for sharing. So, so what we are understanding is AI is a tool, but we as people are still listening to the Holy Spirit, and we are as we are led by the Holy Spirit, we are putting the message together and then communicate it to the people. So just because we use AI or any other tool, like you know, if you use Google or any other tool that we use, they don't take away the fact that as people, we have to be dependent on God's holy word and the leading of the Holy Spirit, ultimately to have any kind of impact on people. The tools we use itself, they don't, they don't have impact. It's God's word. It's the anointing. And so we are very dependent on the spirit of God. So AI doesn't you know, exclude that. It's only a tool that comes alongside us and helps us in our study, preparation, those kinds of things. So having had that discussion, which is very good, um, I just want us to, uh, just a few other things. Uh, we're talking about AI is that when we are using the ethical consideration, right? So when we are using AI as a tool, just remember, basically it's all software, right? Behind running on servers and networks. And that's all that's it, that's it is. And based, it's built around, it's built on data that's been fed to it. So we need to keep some things in mind uh, from, from an ethical perspective. One is there could be some bias in the algorithms that are being used or in the, the way it's been trained. So we don't just blindly take everything that, you know, uh, that, we, that, that we get from an AI tool because we understand how the tool has been trained. The data that's been used to train that data could give it a bias, right? Uh, it can be biased one way or the other. Of course, uh, hopefully people who build these tools will try to be neutral and uh, uh, and, and, and and nations and are trying to you know bring in these regulations to make sure that there is the responsible use of AI. Um, the European Union were the first ones. I think just last week they released uh, their uh, AI guidance policy, uh, basically telling co companies how to use AI responsibly. Uh, I'm making sure that all the big companies, especially the big companies that are putting out these AI products now, uh, make sure that uh, their products don't, I mean, there are a lot of factors, and one of them, of course, is the bias. So uh, if, if we see anything wrong, information coming, then we know, okay, so there's a problem with the, with the software, with the, with the algorithm there. There could also be error in AI output, so it doesn't mean everything that comes through is perfect. Uh, and uh, and you know we have these disclaimers on every tool that we see. You know, hey, this is experimental. Be careful. You check check the content you're reading. So we should do that. There could be hallucinations. There could be a drift in the information that's been given. So uh, we should check whatever AI puts out. So ultimately, that's our responsibility while we use the tool. Uh, then also, there's the concern of data privacy. So um, again, this is more important. I mean, I, I guess it'll be important when we train AI, uh, these AI tools on 
our data. So, uh, example, if a church or a ministry is creating these AI tools for its community, you got to be careful. Don't give out confidential data to the to the tools to train it on, because then that data will go out to the people. Uh, confidential data would be like the names of your congregations, their personal information, details, phone numbers, birthdays, anniversaries, and all that. You don't want to let the AI machine learning uh, model that you're training feed on that data. That will eventually go out. So you have to be careful. Also, copyright decisions, uh, copyright considerations, meaning uh, uh, we have to be careful on, on using copyrighted material. So sometimes, um, if these tools are trained on content that is copyrighted by the original authors or producers, that could lead to some problems. And 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 we are seeing those problems in the industry, but people are trying to figure out how to resolve it. You know, uh, because um, some of these uh, tools, example. Of, uh, chat GPT and of um, Gemini and Copilot, technically they're supposed to have been fed with or trained on open source or information that's public domain. But it's in reality some of the information that's been trained is actually behind or outside of the public domain. So that's where the authors of that information are raising their hands up and saying, hey, you've used my content to train your you know your machine learning models and so what about that you know and so they're trying to resolve all of those things so there's copyright considerations we should be careful about uh, and uh, uh, when we're using AI tools and lastly is uh, transparency in decision making that means uh, especially in, in situations that are important if I use AI to generate content or, or you know make a decision it's always good for me to acknowledge that I'm not saying in everything but where it's really important uh, to say that okay uh, you know especially uh, so people don't have to give you the credit for all the work uh, some tool did for you so that transparency should be there right so these are some ethical considerations uh, to keep in mind as we use these tools so, you know, uh, just to kind of close out this chapter, some of the areas that we at APC are actually looking at, uh, which our IT teams are working, uh, are getting ready to work on, where we want to customize some of these tools that are available for our use. Uh, one big area is in language translation. You know, so a lot of our books, a lot of our content is being translated into other languages. It's a very manual process, a very tedious process. Uh, our, our books, our audio, video. Um, uh, whereas now we have, uh, you know, natural language processing, where uh, you can go from one language to the other very easily, uh, text to speech, um, so on. Lots of lots of things you can be done. So we are working on that. Now the tools are already available, but a lot of these require paid subscription. So. That's why we are seriously looking at building our own with these open source uh, natural language processing models. So we'll have our own tools, and we can use it, you know, more generously, more freely, uh, instead of paying subscriptions to other service providers. Another area we're looking at is people recommendations, where we can recommend people to opportunities and opportunities to people. Uh, so, example, we are about to, we're going to be launching a mentoring platform. I think next week we'll, uh, next week we will get all our mentors on it. And then, so it's a mentoring platform where um, uh, mentors and mentees are being matched, right? So we're opening it up to our local church community, and then we'll open it up globally. So basically, it's a way for people to mentor others. Uh, and this platform will help match people. Right, so a, a, a mentee could come, sign up in the platform, and say, "I'm looking for a mentor in this area, maybe business, maybe entrepreneurship." And of course, this is a platform for believers. So one believer helping another believer. That's it. 
Right? So one believer can come and sign up as a mentee and say, I, I need a mentor to help me in my business, or I need a mentor to help me uh, in developing some professional skills or whatever. And there will be mentors who, who are believers, who have experience in that area, and this platform will connect them. Then they can, you know, meet either in person or online or however, you know, depending on where they are. And that help, that mentoring will take place. So we are about to launch that platform. Um, that's just one example of, of people recommendations. So we will, you know, also be building things where uh, people can be recommended to opportunities. People who want to go on mission trips or volunteer in certain places, you know, uh, nowadays opportunities are there, but people don't know which opportunity is there. So this will recommend and they can connect and go on. Content recommendations. So where there's so much of content, we have 20 years of con 20 plus years of content. And we can recommend that content to people when they come to our website or get into our church app. We can recommend that to them. Hey, this is good for you. Uh, or maybe, uh, you know, the sermon, whatever, based on the, what's happening in their life we can recommend. Uh, we can generate new content based on previous content. So, you know, uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, situations where, uh, you know, we are doing a lot of work manually these days. So if there is an event, if, you know, there's a long process <laughs> to generate all the content to promote that in event. You know, there's the graphics that need to be done. There is the description. There is all the checks that happen then there's the promotions that happen the emailers the whatsapp message the website needs to be updated all this is just routine work uh, that actually can we can use generative ai to do all of this for us you know so what will what what is a three-month process could be done in 10 minutes or less and uh, that's it you know so so we are working towards that getting those kinds of things in place uh, a, a digital assistant for both public and personal, like I mentioned earlier, we just given the name Gabriel. Let's just uh, can ignore that. But um, uh, meaning people come and ask questions, you know, about church, anything, so they get information. Like like we said, a conversational uh, AI, a chatbot, public and also personal. That means for staff, church staff using they, you know, they need information about things in content that we have. Uh, they can use this digital assistant to retrieve that content. You know, something happened five years ago. I want pictures from some event that happened so many years ago, or I want that video, this video. It's all there, but it's so difficult to go and search. You know, so this digital assistant will help find it and pull it out. Uh, search generative experience, which I explained earlier. Uh, you know, based on our content, we can give good summaries, good links to the con the right content. Uh, which is a better search experience than the kind of search that you'll have today where you get pages of links. So the search generative experience will replace that. And then there are custom applications that uh, we have been thinking of, especially for automating repetitive tasks. Like for our, our publications team, they had to proofread up books, they had to format check up books, uh, there's video editing tasks. A lot of these are repetitive tasks, which if we train an AI model, uh, machine learning model, it can just do it for us, you know, so those are things we are planning on. Um, so uh, a lot of opportunities are there, which, and these are all for church related work, you know, church and Christian ministry, where we can take AI, put it to work for us and make us, you know, more effective, more useful to people, help people. And you'll be seeing some of these things come out, you know, in the next, like I said, the, the mentoring platform is ready to be launched. Uh, within the next uh, week or two, first we'll open it up to the people in Bangalore, and then we'll open it up to everyone in the world. So basically, it's believers helping believers in whatever area they they can match and they need help in, you know, spiritual life as well as professional life and family and a lot of other areas. So it's 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 discipleship. It's basically what Jesus taught us to go make disciples. Who are going to make disciples? Believers are going to disciple others, so this platform is going to help them. So, basically, uh, as a church, we can, as a ministry, we can put AI to good use, and um, uh, so on. So, before we close, uh, I just want to take the next few minutes before we close this lecture. 
Uh, any other thoughts that you would like to share on how us as humans can collaborate with AI in the context of church and Christian ministry? Any thoughts you've had or are having? You know, how could we leverage AI uh, or put AI to good use for church and ministry? You know, how can we think about collaboration, making use of these tools? Uh, if anybody wants to share anything, you're most welcome. Uh. Anyone? Okay, um, so what we'll do now is we'll go for a break, and then after we come from our break, we'll come back uh, in about 10 minutes at 11 o'clock. Uh, we'll have our last chapter to do, uh, which is just a few thoughts on data protection. Uh, so I, I think we'll just take another 20 minutes or so, 15, 20 minutes in the next lecture. Um, talk about data protection, which is a big responsibility for us as uh, Christian churches and ministries because, uh, uh, like we mentioned last week, people have entrusted us with their data. They've given us the name, phone number, person, for a lot of other things. And there are actually rules uh, in various parts of the world. Uh, uh, let's say, example, in India, there are data privacy rules. Uh, I'm sure in other parts of the world, different countries, different regions will have their own rules put out by their respective governments. Uh, basically, it's all very similar. It's basically, you know, protect the data that is given to you. So uh, just go, go over a few, uh, go over that so we understand it. And then with that, we'll, we'll uh, close for today. Okay, so let's meet in about 10 minutes and we'll get into our last lesson. Thank you.